Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we're going to be talking about creating expert content. Now, there are several ways for you to use the audio and video medium in order to create expert authority content. Now, one of the ways, of course, you can do that is to create all of the content yourself. Now, what that means is that you are going to be the one to have all of the expert experience because you're going to be teaching people or you're going to be explaining to people whatever the subject matter is from your perspective. And so you need to have a broad base of experience in the particular niche or in a particular area. And you're going to need to come up with the topic areas. And typically, this is going to be an area that you encounter different problems on an everyday basis. You're going to be encountering the different questions that people have. And so you want to be able to do that, and you want to be able to do that effectively, consistently. So if your, uh, if your show or your podcast or your videos are on a daily basis, of course, you'll need to have lots of experience, and you'll need to know a lot about the particular niche. Now, one of the ways that you can bridge that gap... If if you don't necessarily have all of the experience that you like to have inside of the niche is you could purchase or borrow the experience and you can do that by purchasing private label rights content which allows you to basically publish that content inside of your own uh, particular uh, 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 medium whether it's video or audio and use it as your own and it, there there typically is uh there typically is in lots of different places inside of uh internet marketing where you can actually purchase this content you can actually purchase private label rights content and if you do a search in google for private label rights content and let's do that right now you'll see that there are lots of areas where there there is private label rights content that you can get in order to, again, supplement your knowledge or for you to be able to borrow the expertise of others. Now, in this particular case, if you were looking for a particular area, let's say that you were looking for uh, content on weight loss, you could find it and all you'd have to do is search for it and check out the different vendors that are available. And there typically is private label rights content in every area. Uh, in this case, we could type in alternative energy. Maybe that is the area in which you are seeking to become an expert. Right, so what you're doing is you're basically uh, purchasing this content. And typically, one of the things about private label rights content is that it is fairly inexpensive for you to be able to borrow the expertise of others and to be able to get the article content or to get the content that you're going to use in order to create videos, in order to create presentations, in order to create audio content. And one of the other things you can do is you can have experts appear as guests to provide the content. So in other words, instead of you having to provide all of the content, one of the ways in which you build a position where you are an authority is to bring the experts that actually have basically the frontline experience. And you're basically going to have those guests uh, present their content in a fashion where, again, they're, they're probably going to end up being the only one presenting in your medium. So instead of you being there with them, they're going to be the one on the podcast. They're going to be the one in the video. They're going to be the one inside of the Google Hangout. And this is a great way for you to build an authority position because you're basically going to be giving people the opportunity to be presenters in your, in your audience, to your audience. Now, another way that you can create content that's related is you can collaborate with those experts and co-create the content. So in some cases, you can actually have someone on your show or you can have someone inside of your podcast and you can have a discussion about a particular topic. And what you're doing, of course, is you're working with the expert to create the content. This is, again, a great way for you to be able to build on and gain uh, in, in some cases, the audiences of the actual expert, as well as giving your, your audience great content. 
You can, of course, interview experts and create content. So you can actually be inside of the uh, the video or you can be inside of the audio. And basically, you are asking your guests questions that you know that will help them to draw out the, 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 the topics, to draw out the knowledge that your audience is actually going to need for that particular uh, for that particular topic that uh, you have opened up with a particular episode. Now there are two ways or two keys to creating this kind of expert content. One is you want to bring in experts with an existing following. So whenever you go and you get someone, you want to have someone who uh, basically can bring with them people that would actually attend your your show or attend your your podcast or listen to it because this is how you build leverage this is how you build out your authority you actually are are borrowing the authority of others you are are piggybacking on their authority you're bringing them not only are you bringing in the guests but you're also bringing in <clears throat> their followers their attendees or their listeners the other key is somehow adding to the conversation. So in other words, you don't want to do uh, topics that everyone else is talking about. In some cases, what you want to do is to add to the conversation. So you want to take a new angle, take a new approach, take a new spin. You want to be uh, you want to 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 add something new, but you something relevant to what people are really looking for. And in some cases, it helps to be able to bring in guests who can bring a little controversy, uh, people who are going to take a position, even if it's not necessarily the one that you agree with, bringing someone in who already has a position, already has something that they can add to the conversation, that they can take a position that's different from everything else that's out there, this will bring, uh, this will bring people to your, your show. Now... You have to be careful, of course, with controversy. You want to make sure that at the end of the day that it really adds to your authority, that bringing this person in really does really does make people more loyal to you at the end of it, even if, again, the discussion is not going to be something that everyone else agrees with. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we're going to be talking about what you'll need to get started in order to create audio. Now, if you can create content that engages prospects and customers verbally, you may fare best, better than writing, if you decide to use audio to do your content creation. Now, you are going to need a few basic tools in order to get started using audio. Now, you'll definitely want a computer mic and headset and or a USB cartoid microphone. Now, these items do not have to be super expensive. If you do a simple search inside of the Amazon website, you'll notice that there is a Plantronics audio. I think it's a 628. You'll see that it's a general headset. Um, this is just fine to be able to create audio using your personal computer. Whether or not you use an, a mic, a, a Mac, or you use an actual PC. Now, if you should decide to move up from getting a, a, a headset with uh, noise cancellation, you will want to move to a cardioid microphone. And you'll notice there that the cardioid pattern, pattern really does some noise cancellation because of where the actual pattern is where the sound is going to be coming from. So it's not going to pick up everything and in general it's going to leave out a lot of the background noise and so a cardioid microphone is typically one of the great ways for you to be able to get a relatively inexpensive mic yet keep noise cancelled. And there are a number of cardioid mics available that you can actually pick up again. Once again, that are relatively inexpensive. If you don't want to spend as li if you want to spend a little more than you would if you spent for a headset, you can move up in the quality and you can get something that's relatively inexpensive. Now you are going to need a way to capture audio into your computer, and typically you can do that in a couple of ways. One of the ways you can do that is using the program Skype. If you are uh, capturing interview content, um, you can use another program that's actually free on the internet, and it's called Audacity. And I'll show you what that is right now. Audacity can be picked up using a simple Google search, and you'll see it right here, Audacity Search Forge, and just downloading the program onto your hard drive and being ready to use it will actually allow you to capture 
audio onto your computer. And it's fairly simple to use. All you'll need to do is just hit the record button while you're actually talking, and you'll actually see some of the sound coming on. And then when you're finished recording, you can actually hit the pa- hit the pause button or the stop button. Now, of course, you can buy premium uh, premium software. You're actually going to be using this software when you create video too. This will actually help you with your audio. It's called Camtasia Studio. If you're using a personal computer. Or, or PC. There is also ScreenFlow if you use the Mac. Both programs are fantastic for you to be able to use to create and edit audio. And the editing process is pretty important. So yes, you will want to have something to edit. Um, you can actually use Audacity in order to edit your audio too, which is pretty intuitive and pretty simple. You can actually take portions out that you don't want. So again, not too hard to use nor to edit. Although again, the premium programs are much better in doing that. Camtasia, Camtasia, ScreenFlow, and even another program called Sony Vegas. Now these programs can be a little pricey and you can often look look for them on places like Amazon or eBay where they're going to be a lot less expensive. Now, once you have these basic tools, you will be able to create basic audio to create authority content in a niche. And if you already have your content, you have your content source, which is either your knowledge or your experience or perhaps private labor rights content, all you'll need to do is to start recording your audio and make sure it's edited for whatever medium that you want to put it in. And then you will then be ready now to get started creating authority content using the audio medium. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content, and in this video, we are going to be talking about creating a pre-recorded audio show or podcast. Now, one way to create audio content is to create a podcast show, and when you think about a show, we're thinking about it in the very same way as you might be thinking about your favorite television show or your favorite radio program that comes on at a specific time, at a specific point during the week or during the day. Now, typically with a podcast show or an audio show of any kind, you are going to be pre-recording the audio and uploading it to some place in order to host it. Now, to increase the amount of exposure that you're going to get to your show, you want to make sure that your show appears in iTunes. This is probably one of the largest or the largest repository of audio content in the form of a podcast. Now, this is done with easily with some of the more popular uh, audio hosting repositories, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Let's take a look at iTunes for a second. And you can see here that if we just did a simple search and looked for iTunes podcast for weight loss, right, you'll see a number of results. You'll even see here that as of December 2014, there was a listing of the 19 best health and fitness podcasts of all time. So you can see here, iTunes is a very popular place for people to be able to put their podcast again, for them to get the exposure to their brand and to whatever it is that they have to offer. Now, when you do your podcast, what you're going to be doing, of course, is you are going to be making your audio available on a regular basis on a website or in an audio repository. Now, we've used that term a couple of times now. So what do we mean by audio repository? Well, one place that you might have even uh, you might have even frequented or you might have even seen already is called SoundCloud. And while there are a number of musicians that use SoundCloud, it's for more than musicians. As an entrepreneur, you can use SoundCloud in order to create audio content. And all you'll have to do is to go here to create an account. And in the same way that you see this, and let's just for the sake of argument, let's just type in weight loss. And as you can see here, there are people that are creating content specifically for their particular niche and weight loss. So you can use SoundCloud as your repository to upload your audio and to hold it so that people can either listen to it on SoundCloud or you can actually link to it or link to it from your website. Another place where you can actually listen to audio is called Stitcher. It's another place where you can actually upload your audio. 
As you can see here, Stitcher can be found using a simple Google search. You can then go into Stitcher. And you can actually sign up as a content provider, which is what Stitcher calls their partners. Another uh, another location for you to put your audio would be a website called Spreaker, which actually comes with a built-in advantage because not only does it come connected to iTunes, but it also comes with a connection to iHeartRadio, which is actually inside of many automobiles as well as terrestrial radio. And Spreaker can be found with a simple Google search. You can go inside. And you'll see here that Spreaker is designed for you to create your own podcast or radio show. Right? Fairly simple to use once you already have the equipment that we've talked about that you need to have to get started. And podcasting can be a now a very effective way for you to get your content in front of a number of people that you might not have been able to do so just a few years ago because now iTunes and iHeartRadio is available inside of automobiles. And you're seeing this being discussed in a number of different places online. Now, if you're looking to create your content or your podcast audio using interviews, there are a couple of easy ways in order to do that. One of the easiest ways to do that is to record the audio using Skype. There are a number of Skype recorders available, one of which uh, probably is the most popular called Pamela for Skype. There's also the program Evair and the program Ecamm for Mac if you're still looking to use Skype. The other way to do it is to use a website called freeconferencecall.com. And on freeconferencecall.com, all you're going to need to do is to have your interviewee call in. And then when you have your interviewee call in, uh, freeconferencecall.com will actually produce the MP3 for you that you can use to upload to the various services that we have been talking about. So it is possible to pre-record your audio content to then upload to one of the repositories and then make that, uh, make that audio available to anyone, whether or not they're watching on your website or listening on your website or listening on social media. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we are going to be discussing creating a live audio show. Now, you can create live audio content for your, for your audience, for those people who you hope to follow you, or those people who are looking at you as an authority, by using websites like Blog Talk Radio. Now, Ball Talk Radio actually has live audio, as you can see, and the topics can, can be varied. Some of them are in business, and others of them are just popular culture. So you can create your own uh, live audio or live radio show here on Blog Talk Radio. And in that respect, what Blog Talk Radio allows you to do is to be able to broadcast your content. And really, the application is really meant for people to do their own talk radio show. Now, you are actually using it again to create authority content. You're looking to get people into your marketing funnel. And it really works the same way. One of the great things about Blog Talk Radio is that it automatically connects to iTunes. And that's really a great advantage to you as a content creator. You don't have to do any of the connecting. You don't have to go through any of the technical aspects. All you have to do is really show up to Blog Talk Radio and do your show. And with a few simple clicks, you can actually get your show connected to iTunes. Now, the Blog Talk Radio facility makes calling in with live conversation very easy for you as a creator. So in other words, you can actually have someone call in and be a guest on your show. You can have people call in and respond to your guests. You can have people call in and actually, uh, you can actually have two or three people call in. It's a great way of being able to create content well, with with uh, with an alternative of being able to have people to call in on the telephone and to interact with them on your actual recording. Now, in many cases, the radio shows, or we would actually call them posts in this case, since we're talking about authority content, um, that are optimized for search, and they can actually appear in queried results. 
Of course, depending on the optimization, depending on what the search term is, you can actually find, as you can see here, some of the blog talk radio shows winding up in the search, uh, the search parameters when people are actually looking for particular content. Now, you can use a limited version of Blog Talk Radio for free, uh, but the main or probably the most popular uh, the, the most popular instance of using Blog Talk Radio or the basic using does cost actually $39 monthly. And it is, uh, there, there are other levels, right? You can certainly do the free level or the $39 or $99 or $249, but it's probably best if you're going to do this. You probably want to check it out. Uh, really kind of tested to see if it really fits your style and if you're going to be able to do it on a regular basis and then maybe you can then consider moving up to one of the other levels. Now that basic charge allows you to do or the $39 charge allows you to do a three hour show at any point in time during the course of the day. So you don't have to worry about uh, being crowded out of your time. Uh, the $39 actually allows you to have premium or have uh, priority access to the Blog Talk Radio Studio in order to create your live audio. So again, this is a great way, very easy way for you to be able to create authority content, for you to be able to appear in the search engines, for you to be able to have in calling guests and to create content while you are actually uh, doing interviews or even uh, uh, talking to experts about certain subject matters when, you're, uh, w when you are on your Blog Talk Radio show. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we are going to be talking about creating recorded video as your authoritative content. Now, one of the ways to do and create authoritative content is to do so with video, in particular using YouTube. And since YouTube is now considered to be the second most popular search engine used on the web, it is a very good place for people to be able to place their content in front of people who are actually looking for a particular subject matter. So if you have content that's how-to, or even if you have content that's going to be of interest inside of your niche, YouTube is a great place to put it, and pre-recording the video and uploading it is a great way to get your authority uh, in front of people. Now, the key to being able to create content is to make sure that your post, in this case, which would be your video, is optimized or it's made so that people can find it when they're actually searching. Now, what does that mean? That means then that your title, your tags, and your description to your video are done to entice others to click on the one hand, but on the other hand, it must be created in a way so that people can find it inside of the search engine or inside of YouTube. And you can see that very easily when you go to YouTube and you actually type in a particular phrase. Maybe you might type in your key uh, keyword. And in this case, what you'll see here is what's called YouTube Suggest. And YouTube Suggest takes a look at all of the most recent searches inside of YouTube and it suggests what people can actually find when you start typing in the phrase. So if you think about this from the perspective of someone who is inside of YouTube looking for information, you need to make sure that your tags and your titles and your descriptions make it so that someone who is looking for your particular subject matter, as they are in this particular case, can find your videos. For example, the person looking for weight loss motivation can find this person. If you look here, you'll see here that they're using weight loss motivation in the title. Right? And this is the kind of work that you'll want to make sure that you're doing when you want to use YouTube so that people can find your authoritative content. Now, this kind of pre-recorded video is very easy to do if you have a laptop or you have a mobile device that allows you to record video or a webcam on your video, you can actually record straight into the YouTube facility. You don't really even need any software. You can literally go right here inside of YouTube and you can capture the information on your webcam or you can capture your video here. And as you may have noticed inside of the same screen, YouTube actually provides you with a YouTube editor that you can use if you're unhappy with certain portions of the video that you have recorded. 
that YouTube editor is conveniently located right inside of the same screen where you can actually take the video that you've done and you can actually edit it or cut something in or out of it that you actually don't want. Of course, you've already seen in the very same screen that YouTube offers video creators the opportunity to create content using images and audio. And you can actually use images that you already have uploaded inside of Google. So if you want to turn your slides into photos and you want to actually have them play in your, uh, in your video, you can actually use them here inside of YouTube. And you'll find them inside of the photo slideshow area as well as the import photos area. So pre-recording video is fairly easy whether or not you have your own equipment or you have or you like to use the equipment that YouTube has embedded inside of their software you can certainly do that um, what you want to do of course is you want to make sure that the content you're presenting is already ready ahead of time this will allow you to again deliver content to people who are looking for what it is that you're that, that you're presenting on based on the searches that they're doing in YouTube Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we are going to be talking about a certain kind of authoritative video, creating screencast video content. Now, this kind of content is actually very popular with marketers because you can literally show people what's going on on your screen while you narrate at the same time. It's very effective in being able to communicate concepts. It's very effective in being able to show things that are technical in nature. Now, this kind of video content is going to be uh, advantageous to you, especially when you've got to do something where you need someone to look over your shoulder and to follow you. And for you to have to explain it over and over again would be ineffective. However, um, it becomes the kind, of, uh, the kind of content that, again, positions you as an expert when you are able to explain to someone how to do something that would be extremely difficult otherwise for them to do and understand on their own. Now, it's especially helpful in creating authoritative content when you use your PowerPoint presentation slides. As a matter of fact, the video that you're watching right now is created with PowerPoint presentation slides. It's also a screencast video. So as you can see, it's a powerful concept for you to be able to literally dictate to the, the viewer what they can accomplish by watching what it is that you do. Now, in some cases, um, you can choose to do a screen share video while appearing in it at the same time. And just so that you'll get, a, get an idea of what this looks like, let's take a look. And as you can see, it's a very popular thing for video creators to be able to do, to be able to appear in their actual video. Now, of course, to be able to do a screen share video, you will need some kind of software that does accomplish this. And we suggest that you take a look at Camtasia Studio, which was mentioned earlier, as well as ScreenFlow for Mac. Now, there are other substitute, substitute uh, screen share programs. However, these two are the gold standard, and they allow you to both edit as well as create. And they also give you the option of being able to create audio at the same time. Now, whether or not you're talking about Camtasia for the PC, uh, you are talking about a pretty stiff price tag, as you can see here. You're also talking about pretty much the same thing when you're looking at uh, uh, ScreenFlow for the Mac, depending on what your budget is. Now, there are some substitutes that you can use until you, you're able to get these programs. There is the program Screencast-O-Matic that's available, as well as another one, uh, which is called Cam Studio. Once again, you probably ought to consider these as substitutes until you can afford to get uh, either Camtasia or ScreenFlow, depending on which system that you are using. Now, one thing to be aware of is that some marketers are actually using Google Hangouts to record their screen sharing videos 
And now when you do that, though, what you need to be aware of is that there is a second step. You are going to need to download that video from YouTube and then you'll need to edit it either in YouTube or in some other program. But the screen sharing function is available inside of Google Hangouts. And as you can see, it's a very popular function to be used inside of Google Hangouts in many cases. And many marketers are actually using it as well as many video creators who use Google Hangouts in order to create their videos. So creating authoritative content using video does not require you to, to appear on screen. In fact, you can create videos where you are showing what it is that you're presenting. You can show what it is that you are doing on your computer screen, and you can literally show whatever you'd like to from your PC. That means then that creating video can be whatever you want that will get your customer or your prospect to take action or to give them the information that they want to position you as an expert. What's most important in a screencast video is that you are prepared before you start and that you edit it appropriately so that your your viewer will understand what it is that you are communicating and that they will want to see more of your content. In most cases, you'll want to make sure that your video is around about five minutes or less so that you will not strain people's attention span. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we are going to be discussing creating live video as your authoritative content. And this is just another way of you being able to use the video medium in order to communicate valuable information to your subscribers, the valuable information to your followers, your tribe, or anyone else that will eventually become your buyer. And one of the best ways to do that to create that live video or create video in front of a live audience is to use Google Hangouts. Using Google Hangouts on air, uh, you will be able to broadcast your information using Google. All that you'll really need is your webcam and you'll need the audio equipment that we talked about before. And then you will literally be able to broadcast, to share your screen, to be able to speak, to be able to communicate, anything that you can do in a live presentation, you'll be able to do on Google Hangouts. And it's a great way to be able to create, again, authoritative content, to position yourself as an expert, and to be spontaneous in the moment as you know your content extremely well. Now, in using a Google system, you can either use the webcam, as we talked about, or you can also use a related system to Google Hangouts inside of YouTube called Wirecast. This will involve being inside of YouTube using their live streaming application that, again, relies on a program or software piece called Wirecast. You'll literally be using your camera and you can record with multiple people in multiple places. It's a very handy application when you want to create live video in a different way again that will make it easy for your buyer or your prospect to know the content well enough for them to make a purchase. And whether you use Google Hangouts or whether you use Wirecast, it's a great way to get people to see your content. And especially when you book a, an expert guest, this is, a, this is a way for you to be able to display uh, the, the activity of your guest as well as yourself. And you'll be able to be and you'll be able to literally display your uh, your interaction with each other. And this is a powerful way, once again, to be able to prove your expert status. Now, what's important when you use Google Hangouts is to make sure that you understand the logistics of the dashboard or the Google Hangouts studio ahead of time. Now, it's obviously beyond the scope of this course to be able to give you an extended tutorial on the inside of the Google Hangouts dashboard, but you will want to make sure that you familiarize yourself with it before you go live and before you start recording with a live guest or before you, before you start recording before a live audience. So make sure that you are exercised and sure that you are well-versed in the way to use the dashboard. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content, and in this video, we are going to discuss creating information products as your authority content. Now, it's typically assumed that content must be given away, 
on the in the form of a blog or in the form of a video or even in the form of a podcast in order to attract an audience that will eventually buy your products or service. And of course, that is not always going to be the case with every marketer and or entrepreneur. There are other ways for you to use authority content in order to draw people into a marketing funnel that will eventually buy your products or service. Now, some marketers choose to sell their expertise in the form of information products. Now, when we talk about an information product, we're basically talking about you getting a series of audios or videos or even a PDF or a book or a binder or something that will allow you to learn something new that you didn't know before or something that you want to sharpen your skill on. Now, the same PDFs, the same MP3s that we've been talking about, the same MP4s that we've been talking about, or even PDFs that we've been talking about with respect to the content creation process can be bundled together with similar themed content and then subsequently sold. And this is what an information product is. It's basically all of the same content that we've been talking about creating, except we're going to bundle it together. We're going to make sure it's relevant according to a theme, and then we're going to sell it to the people who are actually looking for the information. And there are sites like Udemy.com and Skillshare that allow people to post this content and then sell it. Udemy is a place where anyone can actually take a course on anything that there is an instructor that has posted a course on here. And of course, not only can you learn, you can actually teach. So anything that you have a skill in or you like to teach, particularly in your area of expertise, you can literally place that information in the form of a course and have it available to people on Udemy in order to buy and you can actually be paid in order to sell it. There are sites that are similar to Udemy, like Skillshare, that has the same kind of same kind of feel, same kind of arrangement that allow you to take your content, place it on the site, and allow other people who are in need of that content in order to buy it. Now, what's most important about this process is that you are establishing that a person is willing to pay for content and that they're interested in your subject matter. So that means that if you can put together content that people are going to be interested in and you've determined and you've established that they are willing to pay, well, then you will then know that this is not going to be someone who's just interested in kicking the tires or just wasting your time as a prospect. They're actually willing to spend real money in order to either accomplish a goal or solve a problem, and they're likely going to be willing to at least evaluate whether or not your product or service is going to fit their needs. Now, the next step uh, in this process is going to be vital, and that is that you're going to want to be ready to collect names and email addresses of those that actually make the purchase. Now, there are ways to do that inside of Udemy. There are ways to do that inside of Skillshare. And even if they're not, you can make sure that this is something that you request people to do. You can ask them to sign up with their name and email address so that they can get more content, more information, so that they can get something that they want bad enough to give you their contact information. This really is the key to making the creation and selling of information products a viable way of being able to get people into your marketing funnel, viewing you as the authority, viewing you as the expert. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we are going to be discussing the most important aspect of really converting that content into prospects and buyers, and that is collecting contact information. Now, regardless of what form of content you choose to use, even if you choose to use your blog content, primarily written content, video content, or audio content, you want to make sure that you are collecting names and email addresses of people who come in contact with your content. Now, in order to do this, you'll need to have your own autoresponder service like AWeber or GetResponse. AWeber starts with a 30-day trial, which you can sign up for and get started with your autoresponder. Pretty much the same thing is going to be true with GetResponse. You can try it for free. And what you want to do is to go in and set up a list and a form. 
This is going to be fairly easy to do inside of Get Response. You're just going to go and create a form here. You're going to choose the template that you want. You're going to save and publish it. And then you're going to grab the HTML code, copy it, and then you're going to add it to your website. Of course, you want to have that page on your website set up with that form so that people can submit their names and email addresses. And when you do that, you want to have that form every place where your visitors are going to see your content. So on every blog page, on every post, uh, a link to it in every video, a link to it at every point at which you have audio, every place where you have content. You want to make sure that people can find a link to the page where they can sign up and put their name and email address in there so that they can become part of your mailing list. And you should be making sure to ask them to join your mailing list. Right, subscribe to your content or download your mobile application in every call to action at the end of every show, at the end of every webinar. Make sure to give them the opportunity and even some incentive if you need to promise them some kind of free report or even something that is relevant to the broadcast. You want to make sure that you give them a great reason to run over to your form and then sign up so that they can make sure that they don't miss what it is that you are giving them. This is going to be important because when you're putting out your content, you're really creating it in order to get people into your marketing funnel. And if you, if you choose not to collect their names and email addresses, then your content, while it might be great, won't have the desired effect that you wanted to have. So collecting contact information is probably one of the most, uh, most important things that you're going to be doing as you create alternative content. So with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we're going to briefly discuss how you select your topics for your content, as well as your so titles. And really, they're really going to be one and the same. And the most important aspect of this discussion is to make sure that you do so carefully, that you do so with your viewers in mind, that in fact, you do so with your buyers in mind. Now to be successful with your audio and video content, your posts or your show titles need to be done with a mixture of copywriting and search engine optimization because first of all, you want people to be excited enough to click on your links as well as being able to find it in the search engines. And that just as the case is with blogging, you got to make sure that your titles are such that people want to click them and open them. So your, your titles should be enticing. They should be exciting. They should reveal uh, some of the mystery. They should, they should not necessarily be written uh, to describe what's happening in the video, but they should be described to, uh, they should be written to describe what the benefit is going to be in the actual uh, content that you are going to be showing them. Now, a significant portion of this will be taken care of by knowing your audience. And it is a step that once you understand what your audience truly wants, what you know what they're truly struggling with, what you know what their goals are, you will be able to create show titles, show content that, that people want to hear about, that they people want to see, that they want to experience, and they will find your content a lot more engaging and get into it faster. So make sure that if you don't know this right now in your niche, make sure that you research and find out what they want to know about. What are they struggling with? What is it that they are trying to do in their lives that you can actually help them with and that you have a product or a service that will fit the need that they have and so that it will become the one solution that they can use in order to solve that problem or accomplish that goal. And you want to balance your title creation and your description by making sure that they're both done in a way so that the search engines will want people to find will want to help people to find them. In other words, make sure that your your descriptions are written with your keywords in them. Make sure that they have the 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 uh, the, the, the enough content in them so that the search engines can tell what your content is about. Remember, you are describing the audio and video, but you're talking about the benefits. 
not just what's going to be in them. And so you want people to be able to find you according to the problem they're trying to solve, according to the benefit that they need, not just what's in the actual content. And that's going to mean that you want to make sure that you have your main keyword and keyword phrase in the title. Think about what you would want people to search for to find your content. And, 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 and what kinds of keywords are the people who will buy your product? What kinds of, kinds of keywords are they using to search for things? Those are the things that you want to create your content about. You want to create your content about the things that people who have the concerns that, that uh, your customers and prospects have that they can have them answered by your content. Those keywords, tags, and descriptions are going to be important because that is what you will, uh, you will want your buyer to use in order to find you. So those keywords, make sure that you do extensive research on them, make sure that they lead to the buyers and prospects that you want, and then make sure that they are in your titles, descriptions, your tags, and everything else that you can use to indicate what your video is about. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back to Alternative Authority Content. And in this video, we are going to be talking about how you can reach experts in order to interview and make them part of your content. Now, there are several sites and resources that you can use in order to reach in authoritative interviewees that will help you to create that authoritative content. And make sure that you're reaching out to people well in advance and that you're doing so with a very professional feel to your request for them to be part of your content. Now, it's a good idea to already have a scheduling software piece available, such as Schedule Once. And Schedule Once will allow you to give your potential interviewee the opportunity to determine when it is that they can be interviewed. And you can have them pick the time that is suitable to them and that you don't have to go back and forth between them. It's a great way of being able to establish their convenience. In order to find the actual interviewees, you can use sites like Help a Reporter or Hero, Profnet.com, Audible.com with some of the authors that have books there, Amazon Kindle authors like to be interviewed. These are all great places to find guests where you can have people who literally want to be interviewed and want to talk about their area of expertise. And don't be intimidated when someone tells you no. You want to make sure to go beyond that. Make sure to be talking to their press agent. Make sure to be talking to their PR person. Typically, the harder someone is to get, the better the content uh, is that they're actually going to be providing to the people who are going to be your readers, your audience, and your listeners. And so don't give up because someone says no the first time. You want to find out what you could do to make them say yes. What is it that they're looking for in order to do an interview? What is it that they're looking for? And in some cases, you might want to just move on to someone else who's on your list, but don't give up on the high profile person who's going to be a great fit for your audience and a great fit to give you the kind of authoritative boost that you really want and need. Now, this sort of goes without saying, and if you have to outsource this, this is important. Make sure that your website already has a professional look and let your potential guests see and hear previous interviews if you already have them. This will give them a comfort level that what they're getting into is going to be worth their time. And that's something that you want to do. You want to make sure that they have the sense, hey, this is going to be a high quality experience. I'm going to look good when I do this with this person. And you want to make sure that you make them feel as if they're going to look better. They're going to be better off for doing the interview with you than if not, they don't do it. So look to find high profile interviewees that already have a following or people that can bring a following when you mention their name. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video.